Hi learners! This is Teacher Lee and welcome to our Math Corner. Before we begin, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Just hit the bell button so you can be updated for our upcoming video lessons. Our topic for today is about modeling real-life situations using quadratic functions. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to model real-life situations using quadratic functions. One of the most interesting topics in mathematics is the quadratic function. It has many applications and has played a fundamental role in solving many problems related to human life. Let's start our discussion with this activity. Let's figure me out. Have you ever asked yourself why PBA star players are good in free throws? How do Angry Bird expert players hit their targets? Do you know the strategies in playing this game? As we go on to this discussion, you will be able to understand that quadratic functions are useful tools in solving real-life problems and in making decisions. So just listen attentively to know more about our lesson. So let's start discussing quadratic function using this problem. Miss Bernardo wants to enclose the rectangular parking lot beside her house by putting a wire fence on the three sides as shown in the figure. If the total length of the wire is 80 meters, find the dimension of the parking lot that will enclose the maximum area. So this is the illustration of the rectangular parking lot beside your house. In the figure, it will let W be the width and L be the length and A be the area. What is the expression for the sum of the measures of the three sides of the parking lot? So our solution, we are going to get the sum of the measures of the three sides. The result is 2W plus L equals 80. So that is the equation of the three sides. How about the length of the rectangle in terms of the width? It gives us L equals 80 minus 2W. Then, we're going to express the area of the parking lot in terms of the width. That is A equals W times 80 minus 2W. So therefore, the area of the parking lot is 80W minus 2W squared. So that is the area of the parking lot. From the given area of the parking lot, let's fill up the table by having some possible values of W and the corresponding areas. So our table of values with width and the area. The value for the width are 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and 18. So, let's substitute the value of width to the equation A equals 80W minus 2W squared. If W equals 3, then we have A equals 80 times 3 minus 2 times 3 squared. So, we have 240 minus 18. Therefore, A equals 222. If W equals 6, then we have A equals 80 times 6 minus 2 times 6 squared. So we have 480 minus 72. Therefore, A equals 408. If W equals 9, then we have A equals 80 times 9 minus 2 times 9 squared. So we have 720 minus 162. Therefore, A is equal to 558. If W equals 12, then we have A equals 80 times 12 minus 2 times 12 squared. 
So we have 960 minus 288. Therefore, A equals 672. If W equals 15, then we have A equals 80 times 15 minus 2 times 15 squared. So we have 1,200 minus 450. Therefore, A equals 750. If W equals 18, then we have A equals 80 times 18 minus 2 times 18 squared. So we have 1,440 minus 648. Therefore, A equals 792. So now, based on the given problem, the area of the parking lot depends on the measures of its length and width. And the equation A equals 80W minus 2W squared is an example of a quadratic function. So we have two variables involved here, the width and the area. Again, width here is the independent variable. And the area is the dependent variable. Independent variable is a variable often denoted by x whose variations does not depend on that of another, while dependent variable is a variable often denoted by y whose value depends on that of another. How did you find the preceding activity? I hope that you are now ready to learn more about quadratic functions. For a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, to be a quadratic function, simply replace 0 by y or f of x to form the quadratic function y equals ax squared plus bx plus c or f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. A quadratic function is a second-degree polynomial that can be written in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c or f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are real numbers and a must not be equal to 0. Why is that a must not be equal to 0? Once a becomes 0, the quadratic term ax squared will be equal to 0. So, the remaining terms will be bx plus c. And y equals bx plus c is not a quadratic function. It is now a linear function. So, remember, a must not be equal to 0. So, let's have this activity. State whether each of the following equations represents a quadratic function or not. Justify your answer. Let's have the first example. y equals x squared minus 5x plus 6. It is a quadratic function because the degree is 2. How about y equals 2x minus 8? It is not a quadratic function because the degree is 1 y equals negative 4x squared is also a quadratic function. How about y equals 8x plus x squared minus 15? Though it is not written in standard form, the first term is the linear term followed by the quadratic term. It is also a quadratic function because the highest degree of the polynomial function is 2. How about y equals x squared plus 2x cubed minus 2? It is not a quadratic function, because the highest degree of the polynomial is 3. y equals x minus 2 times x plus 4. It is a quadratic function. Why? When you multiply the two binomials or applying the FOIL method, you will get y equals x squared plus 2x minus 8. 
and y equals 3 times the square of x minus 2 plus 4 is also a quadratic function. Why? When you simplify the equation, you will have y equals 3x squared minus 12x plus 16. Now, do you understand what is a quadratic function? So remember, a quadratic function is one whose equation can be written in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are real numbers and a does not equal to zero. In an equation, the highest exponent of the variable x is called the degree of a function. Thus, the degree of the quadratic function is 2. And that ends our lesson for today. Thank you for watching and enjoy learning. See you in our next videos. Bye!